Part 78 The Killing of Kaab Ibn al-Ashraf Kaab Ibn al-Ashraf was born to an Arab father and a Jewish mother from the Banu Nadir, thereby claiming two prestigious heritages. He was known for his wealth, handsomeness, and eloquent poetry. He was also an adversary of Islam throughout the Sira. Allah was referring to Kaab when he revealed, The foolish among the people will ask, Why did they turn away from the direction of prayer they used to face? Surah 2 verse 142 When the commandment of Zakah was revealed, he and his friends would discourage the Ansar, saying, Do not give your money away, for I am worried that you will become poor. Do not be hasty, as you do not know what the future will hold. Allah again revealed about him, Surely Allah does not like whoever is arrogant and boastful, those who are stingy and promote stinginess among people, withholding Allah's bounties. Surah 4, verses 36 to 37. When Zayd returned from Badr announcing victory, Kaab responded, If Muhammad truly did kill all these people, then it is better to be in the ground. There are numerous further instances of Kaab's indignation towards Allah and his messenger. After Badr, Kaab forged a secret alliance with Abu Sufyan indicating a treacherous plot against the Prophet. The details of the plot remain unknown, as Abu Sufyan died shortly after. Upon his return, he began writing erotic poetry about Muslim women, naming and describing specific people. This proved to be the final straw for Kaab, as the Prophet said to his companions, Who will take care of Kaab ibn al-Ashraf? For he has transgressed against Allah and his messenger. Muhammad ibn Maslama a senior member of the Awas, stood up and volunteered himself for the role. The Awas had long-standing ties with the Banu Nadir, just as the Hazraj had with the Banu Kainuka, so he was well-suited for the job. Muhammad Ibn Maslama then asked the Prophet for permission to speak ill of him to get closer to Kaab, and the Prophet granted permission. He then approached Kaab and said, This man, that is the Prophet, has come and caused us irritation and now the Arabs are all against us. Moreover, he is now asking for our money, that is, zakah, and he has put us through so much hardship. Kaab was elated with these comments and began mirroring his sentiments. Muhammad ibn Maslama then said, We are now his followers, so we cannot forsake him until the situation changes. Until that time, I need a loan to pay my zakah. Kaab was a money lender and would acquire wealth through usury so he duly accepted. Muhammad ibn Maslama required collateral to secure the loan, and his ingenious plan was to offer his weapons as collateral, justifying the presence of weapons in Kaab's home. Muhammad ibn Maslama then suggested that a few of his friends also borrow money using weapons as collateral, and Kaab agreed, as it would greatly increase his revenue. On the 14th of Rabi Alawal, they approached Kaab's residence in the dead of the night, as it was a secret meeting. Lying in bed with his wife, Cobb arose, but his wife pulled him back, asking where he was going. When he explained, she said, You are a man at war, and I am worried for you. Nevertheless, he wore his armor, as was custom when greeting a guest, and went out to receive them. Abu Naila, who came with Muhammad ibn Maslama as part of the plan, said, I smell the nicest perfume on you. Can I smell it? As Cobb lowered his head for him to smell, he grabbed him, and they assassinated him. They returned to Medina and informed the Prophet that the mission was successful. This event is often cited as being controversial, as some criticize it as an extrajudicial assassination. In reality, Cobb's secret alliance and plot against the Prophet was clear grounds for capital punishment, as it was a threat of treason. Moreover, Cobb was consistent in inciting hatred towards Allah and his messenger, going as far as sexually enticing the men of Medina towards the female companions. The Banu Nadir had already violated the Treaty of Medina in the Battle of Sawik by assisting Abu Sufyan. It is not clear whether Cobb physically participated, though it is possible, considering their secret alliance shortly after. This event is described as extrajudicial, because Cobb was assassinated without proper proceedings. This requires a broader commentary of the political norms of 7th century Arabia and the danger of imposing contemporary norms onto a society which holds inherently different legal mechanisms and societal understandings. The Prophet's leadership was religious, political, and legal.
therefore his order was inherently judicial. The Prophet did not order such attacks in Mecca, but in Medina he was the ruler with executive power, and thus his commands were given with legal authority. Cobb's own wife stated, You are a man at war, even though he was not in a physical battle, because it was understood as per the norm of the time that his engagements were of a hostile nature.